partially filled pipe? It's time to talk about open channel flow meters coming up next on Tech Review. <laughs> Have you ever had a flow monitoring application when the pipe was not completely full? That can be a very big problem. You see, most traditional flow meters, water meter, mag meter, turbine meter, even a clamp on ultrasonic flow meter needs a full pipe to work properly. A common example of this difficult application would be the, the final effluent from a facility to a city sewer system. And the reason the pipe is not full is that it doesn't have a pump in the system. So it's gravity fed, and the liquid is just running downhill to the sewer and has no head pressure. This is a very popular application. Why? Because as usual, it comes down to money. Either the local municipality wants to know how much sewage you're discharging, or the facility owners are saying, hey, why is my sewage bill so high? We're not discharging that much. So, to answer the question, you will need to monitor that partially full pipe. A full pipe is always better to measure flow than a partially full pipe. Write that down. Should you have the ability to modify your piping, add a trap. What's a trap? Go to any sink, Take a look under the sink. See the S-shaped pipe? That's a trap. The purpose of a trap is to always keep the lower loop full of water to block the sewer gases. In our case, we are interested in the full pipe. So for our application, you would need to modify the trap design so it has some straight run of pipe. Now you can accommodate a flow meter. We have a full pipe application and can use a variety of flow meters. That's a great partially full pipe metering solution. If you have the ability to modify your plumbing. If not, you will need to look at an open channel flow meter. Well, did you know that the basis for most open channel flow meters is to measure level? A long time ago, the math was worked out so that when an open channel flow was diverted through, let's call a defined flow element, such as a flume or a weir, you could derive the flow rate based upon the level defined by the flow element. As I indicated, it's basically a math equation. Hmm. Why, you could use a ruler or tape measure and a flume discharge table to come up with the flow rate. Let's see. In a 6-inch partial flume, with 3 inches of level, it equals 103.4 GPM. That's pretty simple. But I don't think I'd like to sit by a flume and watch it all day long, no. Open channel technology has certainly improved. Next up, let's check out the ultrasonic open channel flow meter technology. So, how does ultrasonic level work? Well, open channel sensors are mounted on the top of a tank or in a position above the liquid being measured. The sensor continuously transmits pulses of high frequency sound which travels away from the sensor. It hits the surface of the liquid and returns to the sensor. Now the instrument electronics measures the time it takes from transmitted sound to return of the echo. With reference to the speed of sound in air, the exact distance of the liquid surface from the sensor can be calculated. Since the speed of sound is affected by air temperature, ultrasonic level sensors include a built-in temperature sensor. So the measurements are automatically temperature compensated throughout the operating temperature range of the sensor. Now here is an example of measuring flow using level. The common method of measuring flow through an open channel is to measure the height or head of the liquid as it passes over an obstruction, a flume or weir in the channel. Using ultrasonic level technology, open channel flow meters include a non-contacting sensor mounted above the flume or the weir. By measuring the time from transmission of an ultrasonic pulse to receipt of an echo, the water level or head is accurately measured. 
What if you don't have a defined flow element? Well, you can always go back to the 1800s and use the old Manning equation. You see, back in 1889, Irish engineer Robert Manning came up with the Manning equation, which is still used today by hydraulists or on applications that you don't have any defined flow element. Let's just say this equation is only used more for trending and not in the same accuracy club as meters with a defined flow element. However, there is a flow meter technology that can measure both full flow and partially filled pipes or channels. It's called an area velocity flow meter. The ultrasonic sensor is installed at the bottom of a pipe or channel. To measure the water level, the sensor transmits ultrasonic pulses that travel through the water and reflect off the liquid surface. Flow velocity is measured with an ultrasonic Doppler signal continuously injected into the water. This high frequency sound is reflected back to the sensor from particles or bubbles suspended in the liquid. Well, we talked about theory and technology. Here's a few examples of ultrasonic open channel flow meters and area velocity portable and dedicated flow meters. So, if you have a partially full pipe, if it's possible, add a trap. If it's not practical, then you need to use an open channel flow meter or an area velocity flow meter. Thank you for watching our program. For more information on today's subject, check out our show notes and links listed below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. As always, we would appreciate any suggestions of technology that we should include in our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. We'll see you next time. Do you smell something? <laughs>